Hello everyone, welcome to the Football Uncensored podcast with me, Rob Curtin and John Sitton. We've had a few weeks break, unfortunately. Uh, John's had a, a bit on, slightly important job of uh, <laughs> trading his cab in and um, maintaining a living. So, um, what an excuse there it is. Yeah, John, yeah, how's that going? Oh yeah, oh, 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 nice to see you mate again, yeah. Um... Yeah, I've got expensive taste, so I've, I've got to keep. I've got to keep working. At, I was sixty four last week, um, last Saturday actually. Nice little thing on on Twitter from the Ch- uh, Chelsea Heritage, showing me uh, being closed down. I think it's Frank Stapleton at Ibury. Um Yeah, so I've just been busy with all that, changing it all over, getting a not particularly a new cab, but just a new a newer one. Uh, Euro six to comply with all the all the lies and conditions. Mm. Uh, so yeah, we can carry all the, uh, all, the, yeah. all the red tape. All the red tape. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. Anyway, good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you, mate. Let's crack on with the let's crack on the football. We've got a little bit to catch up on. We're going to try and do a sort of bit of an overview of what we've what we've missed. Talk about as much as we can. And I'm sure um, Chelsea FC gave you a nice little uh, touch oh. on your birthday. Will come up. Mm. Unavoidable, really. Um, there's, there's been a um, few games today, a few games yesterday. It's been a bit of a split weekend with the Europeans uh, playing on Thursday, etc. The league table, as we speak, the promoted three clubs sit in the bottom three. Um, maybe not a great surprise. We've spoken, you've spoken about it on previous casts, and they sit there with the worst goal scoring and goals conceded record in the division. Although I think Bournemouth might save Luton by the odd goal, but realistically, any hope or any surprise, any surprise well, I might have to re- yeah, any I'm, hope for any of them. I might have to rethink. Um, I think one was more wishful thinking, really. I might have to rethink one of them. I think they've probably, I'm looking at it. They're probably, Got the best chance, Luton, in terms of getting getting out out of it. In the respect that of those three, I just uh, looking at the style of play, um, and then you've got that behind the scenes influence of someone who was once there. They remind me a bit of the old, which I, I came up against in a couple of the divisions, the old sort of Wimbledon way of doing things. So you know, um, physically fit, very organised. Uh, physically very tough, uncompromising. Um, the majority of the goals, not from fantastic open football, but more or less from set pieces. Um, I did say that I thought Sheffield United might have enough about. I might have to rethink that one uh, because they've shown nothing since I said it. Uh, in actual fact, there's put very little doubt. I'll have to rethink that one. I think it was more <laughs> wishful thinking on the part of uh, what Bournemouth did to Gary O'Neill, or what I would like to have seen them suffer and maybe go down. Um, because I've, I've thought he was treated appallingly, and it just goes to show that you've got to be careful what you wish for. The grass ain't always greener, and there's no one that can come in, you know, from foreign football as a foreign coach. Uh, who can wave a magic wand and everything's going to be completely different and you might qualify for the Europa League. It's just, it doesn't work like that. I thought, I actually thought he got blood out of a stone. But sticking to the other three, uh, so so that would be uh, like, obviously, Sheffield, Luton and Burnley. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been there. So it doesn't matter the division. It's a different level of football. Uh, but in my brief tenure as a coach and manager at first team level, uh, I knew that the best chance of getting anything, getting a result in a game, and unfortunately I played in a few sides like that as well, all the way from my career, was to keep a clean sheet and uh, start from that basis and hopefully nick a goal from somewhere. I was lucky. I had a couple of individuals. Well, the main individuals was Colin West, who played at a much higher level for the majority of his career. The bottom line is, if you've got no goal threat going forward, and or you're suffering from an ideology, uh, in brackets, Burnley, Um, if you are conceding goals, 
as a consequence of that ideology or you, the players are just not good enough or they just can't take on board or you've got an abundance of indiv individual mistakes, all of which I saw and experienced, then it's an absolute recipe for disaster and I can't see any way up. Well, obviously, uh, as we speak, Bournemouth beat Burnley yesterday. It's, you could, depending on your point of view, you could argue Burnley were a little bit unlucky, but as you've said, um, the naivety of their defending and the yeah. philosophy that they're sticking to could cost them. I think you've also mentioned companies' interviews. We've touched on it before in all the match of the day interviews that we've seen. He's been a he's been quite sort of upbeat and almost almost in denial of the problems. I I think the last certainly this week and the last couple of weeks I've seen him. He seems to be he seems to be getting a bit more downtrodden by it all to me, and maybe I will catch up with him. I mean, you look at the thing this they probably de they were denied. A probable penalty, which on another day might be given. That could go either way. Um, and they were denied a goal as a consequence of offside. Um, but if the truth be told, all right, they, they gave a reasonable, a reasonably good account of themselves. But, um, you yeah, know, so you denied a point at somewhere like Bournemouth. I mean, I, I, I think slowly but surely, he won't realise it the same way as I didn't realise it. Um, you think you're armor plated? You think you're you're bulletproof? You think you're you re your resilience as a player, your resilience and your mental toughness as a player, I should say, um, will see you through it. But it don't work like that. It, it, it takes its toll, and it will grind mm. him down. It will wear him down, and then in turn, um, you know, it will one it will grind the players down. It does. It catches up with you. Uh, because you can't keep going out every week, taking the football field, uh, putting in a week's work on the training field, like we all do, all coaches and managers do, um, I'm assuming. Um, working very, very hard, sometimes double sessions like I did, um, which I'm sure a lot of people do as well, especially latter day. Uh, even if it's just to tickle through stuff, you don't, you don't have to go at it at match tempo. Um, in the end, it will take its toll if you come if you're coming away Saturday with nothing to show for it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's human nature, I guess. Yeah, uh, to a, to a degree, you're not you know you're not a robot at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, switching switching up a bit to the other end of the table, Spurs march on. They've uh, I think since we last spoke, they've won they've won all three games, a bit narrowly at times. Opposition arguably not the strongest, but they've won them nonetheless remain unbeaten and top of the league. Just realistically, how how much of it do you think they can sustain? Are they a realistic total challenger? What do you reckon? Well, the thing they've got going for them, I, I'm, I'm, they've revamped in areas where other clubs like Chelsea haven't, uh, which I said it probably over a period of podcasts. I might have said it with you. I definitely said it previously on here. Uh, I've said it on interviews. I've said it when I did it with uh, Hudson and Shanks. Uh, definitely said it when I did it with Joe. Um, I thought the goalkeeping area needed addressing. People put up the argument, oh, you know, uh, he's a World Cup winner, etc. I said, yeah, but he's, he makes too many mistakes and uh, there's too many things in the minus column and he's on the wane in terms of his physicality. Then I said they're allowing a back five to get back three, back five, whatever way you want to look at it. They're all getting old together. Um, one or two weren't up the, up the standard. Uh, inevitably, they parted with them. But they parted with them, I think, and never changed it around soon enough while Harry was there. Then, it's almost contrarily, uh, people have picked up the thread since, since Harry's left and gone to Bayern Munich um, and taken more responsibility, which begs the question, why didn't they take the responsibility in the first place? In, in, uh, yeah. What I mean by that is, in terms of, oh, we're, we're all right, we'll be all right. Harry will get a goal. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and like I say, vital areas at the back. Um, and they seem to have done, taken care of both ends. They've tightened up at the back. They've got a little bit more creativity in midfield. And you've got other people taking responsibilities for sharing the goals around. You know what I mean? So, but I'll, I'll maintain um, fourth. 
third or fourth. I'll still maintain my prediction. I think it'd be out of Liverpool, out of Liverpool and City, and I'll, I'll maintain my prediction. Just, I mean, just going back, going back to the previous thing. Um, this, this is the problem, Dan. When you look at it, comparing the lower end of the table to the top end of the table, they've just got key players in key areas, and it's like I said. Unfortunately, if you're conceding goals, if and if if you've got no real goals in the side, which I can't see at either Burnley, Sheffield United, uh, even the guys that's out injured, what's he like? One one in four, one in five, one in six is not prolific. Um, uh, I forgot his name. Is it is it McBurney? Something Burnley? Oh, no. McBurney at Sheffield United. Yeah, and then, McBurney, uh, and then, and then yeah, and then and then uh, and Luton themselves may be relying on set set plays. Um, like I said, I think it's a recipe for, for disaster. Um, mm. whether, going back to the thing at the top, whether Spurs can maintain momentum or not, um, what they've got going in their favour, here's the thing. I don't think it's expectation at Newcastle uh, and at clubs like Newcastle. I don't think it's expectation. I think it's the extra pile on accompanied with expectation of the fixture list because uh, I don't know if I'm right in saying I don't think they've got anything to worry about though with regards to playing in Europe Tottenham uh, Spurs well no didn't didn't get into Europe right. and all the other think... clubs all the other clubs around them have so if yeah. I was well, I'd, I would be relentlessly uh, looking to drill them with quality work which doesn't mean like long sessions, what you could, you just say, you, like I've always said, and all of a sudden now, 28 years later, it's become for the last, at least the last three or four, five years, it's become very fashionable and en vogue to say, uh, you want things done at a good tempo, you want things done, or we played at a good tempo, or you want things done with intensity, and we either trained with intensity and we played with intensity. Well, I was saying it 28 years ago. Um, because I, f I think you should prepare, train and play. Uh, sorry, prepare and train how you play. Um, anyway, it was wasted at the wrong club. Um, but couldn't, couldn't see past the um, four rants in 10 months. Uh, uh, but what they've got to do, they've got to do quality work uh, with the right amount of... Um, they've got to get the mixture right with regards to the right amount of tempo and intensity and then off the field... Uh, Ari appears to be, seems to be, um, relaxed and keep a good, a good vibe in the camp, which, which you know that that can only be enhanced by by winning. Uh, I'm pretty sure that that that's a lot to do with the mindset at the moment. And with, with regards to like, likes of somewhere like Newcastle, who should have been or should be there or thereabouts, uh, I just think the extra burden of playing in Europe, I think it might take its toll. Yeah, Newcastle. You mentioned Newcastle. Uh, we're trying to talk about them. They've depend on your point of view. And you said you mentioned the word expectation. Obviously, a lot with their uh, their recently found riches. Expectations have been raised somewhat, and the oh, well, that's a myth. Are, that's a myth. always quite. They're always quite. Ex Go on, sorry. Yeah. No, just I'm sorry I cut across, Rob. But it's just, the, the new no, found riches. They they haven't really chucked money at anything. And if you look at the documentary. Um, around the owners, they seem to be very intent on getting, if they do bring someone in, they seem very, very intent on getting value for money. They're not going to have their pants pulled down like Chelsea have. Mm. have literally spunked over half a billion. Yeah. Um, I, I agree yeah. with you, John, with yeah. what's worth. Cause I've, I've seen the documentary. We've spoken about it. Yeah. I mean, um, maybe people that don't analyse things quite so... Quite so deeply, or quite so, or or for quite so long. Some I would say it's a fair comment to say some or a good number of the Newcastle fans have, have had the thought, or still have the thought, "Oh, we've got loads of money. You know, we should be we should be doing this, that, and the other." But yeah, yeah I, I agree with your point of view, and having seen the doc, that the board seem to have their to use common language, seem to have their head screwed on. Yeah, they right. was crying out for a left back anyway. Uh, Pope wasn't a great deal of money, uh, apart from his display over the weekend. He's international level, he's England level. Lascelles was already there. Um, I don't know if Byrne was already there. If he weren't there, he didn't cost a lot of money, and he's a local boy. 
Uh, Trippier come back from uh, Atletico Madrid. He won a lot of money. Longstaff was already there. He's come through the ranks. Longstaff brother come through the ranks. Um, they've added slowly but surely around them. Uh, mm. Callum Wilson, he knew from working with at Bournemouth, he, of, of, or work, wherever he was before, he won a lot of money. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the biggest outlay is the is, is, Isak. Uh, I'll go and pronounce it. Yeah, Isak or Isak, or, Isak, or, Isak. Oh, and, sure. the, and one and one of the midfield players. Um, and then they've got the recent one who's been up on the on the uh, gambling allegations. Um, yeah. which, the fun, the funny thing is, someone asked me about that the other day. You know about the hypocrisy of it all. But anyway, there you go. So, what, what, what's new in football? You know yeah. what I mean? No, it's, the hypocrisy it's, certainly it's, not. The gambling yeah. thing, I think, we'll probably save for another for another podcast and uh, the implications of that and the wider element of that and with the sponsorship and that I think we should probably say that for another cast but yeah Newcastle themselves have had depends on it again all uh, all very um, subjective they've had they haven't won for a couple of games they lost in Europe in the week so you're going to have some people going oh they're stalling they've had a bit of a wobble mm. but then if you look at actually take 30 seconds to look at it I did today they're the top scorers in the league and they've got about the fourth or the fifth best defence in the league okay and they're still, you know, they're still, I think, top five, top six. Yeah. But like you say, the, when European and other cup fixtures bite, we'll see how they we'll, we'll see how they do. I think that's a very good point. Another team who we spoke about a few times and you've championed on most episodes we've done is Liverpool, and they're still they're still up there. Another pretty comfortable win at the weekend. Yeah. We. Briefly saw a bit of them in Europe the other night. Um, full of goals, it seems. And they, again, like Spurs, they seem to have tightened up a little bit at the back. So, yeah. so I, far, I, so I, good for Liverpool. I'm looking at... Um, see, I don't... I'm going to be adamant. I don't think he was ever going to be the same player after the uh, the horrific challenge by um, the goalkeeper. What's his name? Pickford on Van Dyke in the... In the the derby game way back when. Oh, um, yeah, a couple of years a, ago. Yeah, a couple Green. of years ago. It's a serious injury and he's done well and he sustained a level, but it wasn't a level where he, he looked like, a, a, you know, Rolls Royce um, as, you know, as opposed to, I don't know, more recently looking slightly less so. Um, I think a lot of it can be attributed to him getting back a bit of form, Van Dyke. He looks in really, really good form. Um, just going back quickly to Newcastle. Um, what's occurred to me, Rob? The common denominator with some clubs is, and it can lead to an upturn or a downturn, but either way, it's because they've been interrupted at these international breaks. And and sometimes you have the thing where the season kicks off and they get off to a great start, they're off to a fly. Then you have that international break, one of the first international breaks. Uh, I think there's another one, I'm not sure, before Christmas. But anyway, inevitably it leads to a bit of a, a blip, a wobble with some of them, and they come back and they struggle to get back into the rhythm they found. And I think with them, coupled with the um, the, ad, the added fixtures, with regards to the group games in the Champions League, that that might be a contributory factor. And, um, you know, there's games where they've looked like they've got a lot of energy, and, and, and I think yesterday was one of them, uh, and games where they've looked a little bit more lethargic. Um, but yeah, no. Going back to Liverpool, they're going to have to handle the injury at the left back. Um, I think he's going to be out for some yep. time. They said Robertson. Who I think one of the best left backs in in the Premier League, if not Europe. Um, yeah, got a lot of that shoulder, trouble. isn't it? Dis- dislocated yeah. shoulder, maybe. Yeah, and they, and they, they're just it's just a monkey injury. I mean, I'm, I'm, I remember uh, years ago. Well, it, it ruined his World Cup, didn't it, Brian Robson? Because you, even if you yeah, repair it, there's no guarantee it ain't going to pop out again. Um, mm. you know, to do with a, it's a ball and socket, really. Um, fundamentally, uh, and there's no guarantee it ain't going to pop out again. Um, I, I remember he he had a shoulder at Chelsea. Gary Lock had a shoulder injury, uh, initially, and then he ended up he broke his collarbone in training because it was so weak. And I remember, <laughs> I'll never forget the look on his face, and I walked in to see if he was all right. And I was only a kid. I didn't really, but I just had that concern because the, the look on his face, he just went grey with a pain. He was in so much pain. Um, but yeah, they're going to have to deal with that. Uh, they look like a coping better at centre-back. They've got a bit of a thing going on now with uh, Alexander-Arnold. 
uh, a la City coming in. I am wide mm. then coming in off the touchline, uh, creating an overload. Eas easily coached, easily done. Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose it depends how you set up against them. But they, I think that what they can do, they can do both. I think they could. What's good about them is, as opposed to some of the other teams, they can play eye up and play an eye line. In the past, it has been exposed on a couple of occasions. I've actually highlighted it. And I think maybe I said maybe they should think about defending 10, 15 yards deeper because it would suit their game also. What they've shown recently is they're capable of doing both. They can hold an eye line and press higher up the field and nick the ball back in and around the box and create something. Maybe a goal, maybe a goal scoring opportunity. Or what they've shown in a few games, they've defended a little bit deeper. And the, the thing that springs to mind was last week when uh, I think it was Nunes rolled one to Salah to walk onto it and he just... He just side-footed it into the net at, at, at pace. He, he punched it, you know what I mean? But they defended a little bit deeper, won the ball back, and it's just like, bump, bump, within two passes and a bit of running with the ball, it was in the back of the net. So, yeah. ergo, they can defend deeper and it hit you on, on the counter-attack. Yeah. So, they're, they're, looking, they're looking in good shape. I think they're looking in good shape. And I still maintain that there will be... Um, Although I haven't seen it, I've got to wait for a match of the day and I, I didn't see it live. And uh, my son-in-law told me and you told me about the city result, um, there'll be. I still think there'll be the, stating the obvious ministry, stating the obvious, uh, the ones to catch. And if anyone's going to uh, make a fist of it, uh, I've said from day one, I think Liverpool will be the biggest threat. Yeah, um, so far proven reasonably correct, I'd say. Uh, we'll leave we'll leave the city United um, for now until right. we know the result, but. Yeah. Uh, like I say, I spoke to you earlier. Your son-in-law obviously spoke to you earlier. Uh, we'll go. We'll move on to Chelsea oh. for for the the good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh. I, I know you, you want to you want to talk about it, but you don't want to talk about it, given your allegiances. But I mean, how I wrote earlier, two of their three wins this season have been against Luton and Burnley. That's two, right. Teams we spoke about earlier. That's right. I think the other one might have been Fulham. I'm, I'm not sure. So I'm sure someone yep. will correct me on that. Um, so, I mean, yeah. how, how, how wide and how deep are the cracks, John? Yeah, well, that's what that, that's what I said when they beat them, when, especially when they hammered Burnley. I said, look, you know, don't start getting involved in self-gratification. You know what I mean? It's it's, Burn, it's Burnley, all due respect. You, you're you entitled. To, they're entitled. They should beat Burnley by, like, 4-1, four, four, whatever it was. Um. Don't get overexcited because I think the problems are still there. The problems have always been there. Uh, some of them self-inflicted. Uh, some of them not addressed. I've gone as far as saying today. I mean, I'm reading some of this not so I mean, what utter fucking hell. Uh, he's raised a point about some of the crowd getting on the case of one of the forwards and uh, instead of encouraging him, this is Pochettino. I mean, you've that that's a I read that's, that, yeah. Yeah, that's that's uh that's that, that's a a distraction. That's to uh, that's a diversion tactic. Yeah, I was just said on Twitter today. Two, if I count the preseason of a friendly three, uh not very good games out of fifteen as a nineteen year old. I got absolutely fucking slaughtered, hammered. Uh because the fans were angry and bitter at the state of the club, angry and bitter at the lack of finances, angry and bitter at the glory days having gone, angry and bitter that they sold uh, the family, the, the perceived family silver, uh, angry and bitter that we were no longer challenging, and it was a, it was a, the thing. Where, uh, this is me now as a mature adult, mature man trying to look at their madness, their mo their motives be, be for picking on me as a nineteen year old kid. Um, and if it if he'd have been back then, he'd have hung himself. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to beat about the bush or fanny around. I had all sorts of shit going on off the field, and I was having to cope with all that as well. Uh, the club was a shit pit. It was like an absolute nest of vipers. Um, and I'm convinced if someone shouts that you wake up, that's the least of your worries compared to what I had. Uh, but I said way back when. Um, I still think it's the case. They didn't know if they was having a shit shave or haircut with the goalkeeping situation. So they've had they've laid out mega money for three different goalkeepers. None of them have proved to be an absolute 100% cast iron uh, success. And with any certainty, you know, he's like a top... When I played, uh, the best goalkeepers were, were basically... Well, I think, I think one. 
uh, it was at Arsenal. It was Pat Jennings who he left Spurs. You need a top draw goalkeeper to help form a top draw spine. I don't think Chelsea have got that. Then you look at this, like I said, um, he got an injury prone wing back, uh, and I think he oh, started. <laughs> I, I just think he started to believe in his own publicity a little bit too much, and he looked a little bit lardy. That's the Reese James, and I, I always think he's defending. Uh, at the, he's at his most vulnerable when he's at the, the furthest point away from the ball, as in if the ball is on the opposite side and he's got to worry about someone making a third man run into the box or creeping around the back of him or getting across him, um, or a third man run from midfield that he should pick off and leave his man to get over and be condensed and compact. Uh, the left back, he got uh, Todd Bealey, Bo, however you say it, Bowley, he, he had his pants pulled down to the tune of 50 million. Um, I do not know for one minute, apart from his air, what he brings to the party, the left back. He passes it easily. He passes it simply. Uh, he's not uh, what you might call a versatile modern fullback who's a fantastic defender like Robertson, good athlete, um, and also offers a massive threat going forward. I think he's very, very ordinary in all of those three de departments. And 50 million, you've had your pants pulled down. You've got the centre-back situation. Um, no real out and out like it was when I was there. No real out and out dominant force. They sold Steve Wicks, who was a kid anyway. Um, you had Mickey Troy, Mickey Troy, who should have probably been an England contender, but really and truly didn't give a fuck about football or uh, to a large degree Chelsea. He thought he was doing the club a favour, picking his wages up. Um, was he the bloke who had the car lot, John, just cutting in? Had a car front and an electrical <laughs> wholesale business. Uh, perennially injured. Uh, never happier than he's sitting in the treatment room with a towel around him, a mug of tea and a, and a Rothmans. Um, but I think that was the cynicism born of the fact that he never got his chance under um, McCready and Sexton before him. He got signed as a 19-year-old, I believe from Slough, Mickey. I might be wrong. Um, I'm doing this off from long-distance memory very long distance memory because like I say my age I gave my age away earlier um, yeah. and he never got a look in under it was always Webb and, and Dempsey under Sexton it was always inevitably either Hay and Wicks or Harris and Wicks under under uh, Eddie Mack he had a few outings but he should have been the staple staple diet he should have been the, 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 the form part of the bedrock I just think he thought you know what fuck it and he became philosophical about it and if the truth be told um, again, as an elderly man, looking back, if I'd have had it about me as a 26, 27, 28 year old, you, 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 I should have got up and smacked him in the mouth before every game. The only time Mickey was absolute at his optimum was when a goal went in the back of the net and it got a rise out of him or someone made him angry, as in they might have caught him and if it, 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 and then he, was, he became like a caged animal. And um, he brought his physical attributes to the table, right? So sticking to the going back to Chelsea uh, latter, uh, uh, latter day, um, you've got a 37, 38 year old who's your best defender with a glass knee, played at a, a great clubs at an higher level, um, and he's come here. And if I was going up against him, I would say to my, obviously you want pace in every area of the field going forward, a bit like Wolves. I would just say get up against him. Straight away, you'll push Chelsea back because what he'll do, he'll back off because he's paranoid about the space in behind. I've seen people now give him a yard and a half. The way he plays, like I used to do, right? So you play with your nut. You give yourself a yard and a half. And if it's in the channel mark on the outside or if it's up the middle, you get in line with the ball, right? But you give yourself a yard and a half knowing that you can always go tight and close down if he comes off you. But if, it, if, it, if he spins in behind, and I've come up against some pr pr proper very quick feet, people with very quick feet, like Ian Wright, and they never got a kick. Um, but what he kept trying to do is take me under the ball and spin. So I had all that covered, or he'd, he'd bend and run into the channel, I had all that covered. If he went short, I'd, I'd go tight and nail him and wouldn't let him turn. What you got to do with him, as soon as you, if you get against him, he's got to back off, so that pushes you, keep, and you just keep pushing him back, pushing him back, you don't even need the ball. Uh, the kids they're playing and the people they're playing alongside him, not, not up, not up to it. Not good enough. I promise you, not good enough. Uh, the people in midfield, um, maybe one or two highly paid mercenaries, one or two homegrown kids who are good enough to do a certain job, but they're not going to be Champions League class. 
Um, and then you've got the forward line problem, which is what I said. It's crying out for, you can't buy one. You've got to buy two minimum. And if you remember the glory days of Man United, they had four top draw, top class centre forwards under Ferguson. And he could rotate yeah. and he could do any crossover he wanted and play any two out of those four. Right? Uh, Cohen York, Cohen Sheringham, uh, Sheringham and York, blah, 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 blah. Right? Solskjaer okay. uh, was the fourth one. Uh, yeah. Him and Sheringham when they came on in the show. Or him and York or him and, and, and um, Cole. You understand? So all these different permutations that would cause all different sorts of problems. So I said, it's no good getting even one. You've got to get a minimum of two. So if you want to play that, even if you're going to play with that, like Chelsea do, like um, evolve, it's like a, a four three three that evolves into three four three that evolves into three three four. Because I've been and seen it and watched it, um, and I've uh, recognised it on the telly. Right? Well, that's, that's that's a waste of time if you ain't got a top drawer. So the bottom line is, he spent something in the in the region of six hundred million. And he's had his pants pulled down. Now, I've gone as far as saying today, apart from what I said ages ago, a little bit tongue-in-cheek, he it, 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 it might as well have employed me. At least I know what I'm looking at and what I'm talking about. And I know whether someone's trying to have me over. What you should do, Rob, is uh, have another clear out. He should sack the advisors that have been acting with him, that have been employed by him, and that have been blowing down his ear. And don't deal with the agents anymore that he's been dealing with because they've rumped him. And um, I think at best... I think I might have said it in one of our earlier podcasts when we were we were trying to make predictions after the first game or as a ball before a ball had been kicked. Um, if you go through it, if you go uh, City, Liverpool, Liverpool City, Arsenal, Spurs, Man United, um, I think Newcastle, that's six. Uh, and then you start going into the the, the, the sort of West Ham territory. I've, honestly and truly, I think Chelsea would do well to finish eighth. Yeah, I think you said eighth or seventh. I can't remember. It's one. It's one of those two. You've, you've, it was definitely outside top six. That much. It's on that its much way to be. It's on its way to being a basket case. But he's got. A, he's got. A, I would do the same now with the benefit of hindsight, rather than tell the truth. Pochettino's got a. He's got a waffle and bullshit and put on grey moribund platitudes and positivity. You understand? Mm. Uh, which you see them all do now because they're all media trained. I wasn't media trained. I was thirty four. Um, and I think I would do the same. Fundamentally tell lies to paper over the cracks. You know what I mean? The biggest threat, um, and I don't even think he's playing in his right position, is is Sterling. You know, your, big, your biggest, uh, when you look at the goal threat against Burnley, it, it, mo most of the threat, sort of the ins that inside channel, uh, level with the corner 18-yard box, you know, where they do the underlaps or gather the ball and get at someone or whether you, they go outside and whip a crossing, or whether they bear down on goal, it will come from Sterling. You know what I mean? So I don't I don't think, um, similar to what I said about Spurs, I don't think I'd hang me out on him for a whole season for, for, for where the goal's coming. That's one of the reasons Man City let him go. He, he lost, he missed too many, um, he, lost, he missed too many side foots from three yards. <laughs> I think it got to a stage where, you know what, we've had our best out of him, we've got to let him go. Yeah, he's he's been a bit wasteful over the years. It's, it's fair to say. Um, yeah. I'm very un, very unfortunate. We're coming to the end of this uh, little sessions, so it's it's, it's shot boy. We, there's a lot more we want to cover. Hopefully, we'll do another very soon. But uh, apologies again for the, the delay. Look, so we've had a we've had a lot on. John's had a lot on over the last few weeks. But thank you, everyone who's watched so far. Hopefully, a lot of people watch this one. And please watch some more in the future. Like, share, subscribe, all of that. Thank you very much from me. Thanks, everyone, uh, if and when you listen to it. And thank, thanks to you again, Rob, for giving for giving up your time and being so generous, letting me ramble on, especially about my old club there. <laughs> oh.